Saudi Arabia this year and until today I didn't have the time to test V-Rail for Revit and this video is going to show you my first impression about V-Rail for Revit and how I see the usage of V-Rail for Revit. I will talk about some of the concepts too. For example, when you install V-Ray for Revit, you have to click on enable V-Ray in here because I have clicked it before. You can see that, you can't see that here, but uh, you have the option in here. And then you will have all of the option available for you. And then before going to any uh, folder, make sure to do some settings to make sure that you're working with the right setting. The first part is if you have a, a uh, good GPU card, it is better to put it on Coda on RTX. I have an RTX card, but RTX didn't work uh, well for me. I don't know why. So I switched it to Coda. But if you don't have a good GPU card, make sure to put it on CPU and that's fine. And also make sure to go to the channels and make sure to turn on the denoiser and put it on a NVIDIA or Intel denoiser. Again, if you have a good GPU card, Put it on NVIDIA denoiser and if you have a good CPU, make sure to put it on Intel. Okay, that's great. And also because I want to do some post-processing for my lights, I, I like to turn on the light mix too. We will talk about it later. And the other settings are fine for me. And uh, let's close it. When you want to start your work with V-Ray, as I know, you have different options because it is same with different softwares like 3ds Max and those kind of parts. We have render production, which we will use for the uh, final rendering. We have interactive render, and also we have V-Ray Vision. It's kind of a or V-Ray Vantage. When you use it, it's kind of a escape, but with lower quality, you can use it. We don't like. We don't. We are not going to work with this tool in this tutorial. Let's click on render interactive and let's see the results in here. We have the model in here and it is progressive. So when you wait, it will be better and better. But because it is in, uh, interactive, it's not going to create the final render for you. And also you can, uh, you can specify the quality in here because I want to show you the process. I will put it on qu a low quality. And at the end, when you want to create the final render, it is better to put it on a uh, higher quality, maybe high or high plus. So that depends on you. And also for the aspect ratio, we can change the resolution in here. We can change the aspect ratio and we can put it on crop region or we can change any aspect ratio we want. And which uh, when we are saying uh, when we are saying it is interactive, it means when you rotate this, it will update it itself in V-Ray 2. So that's the difference between this and final production, which doesn't give you permission to rotate around and do something like that. And we have some settings. For example, uh, now we are using the uh, base sky. Uh, let me delete this in here. We have some, we have a basic sky in here. With V-Ray Sun, you can see we are on V-Ray Sun, which, can, which you can click on it and we can change the intensity and something like that. But if you want to use HDRI, you can use it by drone light, doom light, you can go to the dome light. And in here you can put on HDR image and you can specify the HDR image if you have one, which you can download on Polyheaven. And you can see, you can, it's not a good position for our sun. We can go to the sun setting in uh, Revit and change it. For example, let's go to maybe another time or let's change it in here. You can see it will change the sun, but it is hard to find the right angle. So we have a great tool that uh, really amazed me, uh, which is light gen in uh, V-Ray for Revit, which will uh, give you some preview from some variation of light angle. You just need to go to the uh, lighting part in here and then we need to click on light gen. Now I don't want to download the additional content, click on continue. And now you need to specify the uh, type of thing you have, exterior or interior, we have a exterior part. And then for the light source, we have a HDR. And in here, 
of you, you see we don't have any option for generating because you have to pause the interactive render now you can see we have the option you can uh, test different angles and you can see the number of variables 81 is too high let me bring it down to something like maybe 21 and now for the variations you can change the variation to and seeds and all of that click on generate and you need to wait a little bit and it will give you a preview from all of the or some of the possible angles of sun or HDR that you can place because I didn't specify the right HDR it didn't work so let's work with the sun default V-Ray sun and put it on this one and you can uh, specify the different altitudes and different azimuths angle for yourself and it will give you more variation let's put it on something like that and let's generate it to see the results now you can see we have lots of the variation and you just need to click on uh, any of them for example this one you can see it in here and also you can turn on the uh, interactive render to see them in live too let's wait a little bit and we can see the options in live before going to the next part make sure to like the video to help us create more tutorials like this and if you want to get access to all of the exercise files i will put the link in the description go to our patreon now for example you, will, you may say i don't like this one let's see this one and you wait a little bit and now you have the another lighting you can test any of them for yourself to achieve the best one and then even you can save it for the future usage and let me uh, close this one and now we have the right sun also we have some uh different uh, uh different methods for materials and assets in, uh, in comparison with Enscape, as I understood in here, you have a Cosmos browser which you, will, which you can find some, some high quality materials and assets and you can place them, manual, place them separately or you can replace the uh, existing materials and existing geometry with that. For example, let's change this material in here to something else to do that you need to go to the asset editor and let's go to the materials we don't have any material in here so let's go to the chaos cosmos and let me import this material that i've downloaded earlier to the project and you can see we have the material in here and also let's import this one too and we have the materials in here but if you want to assign it we need to go to the appearance manager too and in appearance manager we need to go to the materials you can uh, search the material in here or in here we have a pick material option which you can uh, click on it and select a surface in revit and it will allow you to pick a surface which will show you and which will give you the material for it now let's select this one for example now we have the material and now we can uh, see the material preview in here too let's see the material preview you can see the material preview in here let me close the material preview and now you just need to drag it to the material and appropriate material in revit and now it will update it itself in here you saw that the material changed also you can change the uh, width of it in here or you can go to the other window in here as an editor the bad thing about V-Ray is for example I did a, I closed the asset editor but when I click it you have to double click to bring the window and it is a little bit annoying especially for me let me open this part and now you can change all of the settings in here you can go to the you can open this one and you can go to the uh, uh, for example diffuse texture and you can change any setting you see in here you can change any setting you want so it is too easy to change the options and I, as i saw some of the settings it has more settings for material and that it support more parameters for materials in comparison with ends but the speed is not that great and it is a little bit slow and it is not that intu intuitive as Enscape in my opinion.
and we have we can we can place some assets too for example let's go to the Kia chaos cosmos and just import for example this car in here and now we can place the car you can place it in any way you want for example let me place it in here and let me escape escape from this let me close this one now we have the car you can see the quality is too hot uh, it's too good let's create a close off from this one and let's wrap up this session okay now let's go to maybe site view and let's create a close up for this car let me bring it in here and let's create a, create a camera in this part now let's put on shaded and we don't want any far clip in here let's put the far clip to the off part and now we can place some other parts too but let me narrow down the crop region now let's go to V-Ray and let's create a before that let's see into uh, render interactive of it and then we can create a final render you can see we did the interactive render but we get the last part because we need to pause this and we need to close this now we need to change the view that we are rendering to the new view that we made which is 3d view one and let's select it and let's click on render interactive again and you can see the great model that we have honestly the assets are much better than Enscape assets um, and they are in a better quality uh, but before uh, going to uh, let's create a final uh, render from this one to create a final render let's put the quality on high high plus and the resolution is fine and let's click on render production to see the final result for ourselves and let's learn how we can create a image save for ourselves or image export for ourselves too now we can see the complete and render it is really good and i uh, rendered with the lower dpi if you want to zoom more you have to render it in a higher dpi but it's fine for now but before uh, closing this uh, session and this video, let's check the VR Vision 2 to see if we can have a real-time walkthrough and real-time walking in the model or not. To go to uh, VR Vision mode, just click on here and let's start VR Vision, which will allow you to walk uh, real time in the model as we have the same thing with a higher quality in uh, uh, Nscape for Revit. Let's wait a little bit and see what will happen. Now we are in V-Ray Vision which will allow you, it works as like Nscape for the, uh, for the options. You can see they are just RPCs. If you want higher quality, you can change them. You can link them with V-Ray assets and in a, even in your version of V-Ray it will support the Enscape assets too so if you have placed some Enscape assets you can use them very easily in just one click in this part too it's okay but it's not uh, the same quality in comparison with Enscape and it is just maybe <laughs> orbiting around in uh, Revit viewport with a little bit more <laughs> realism. So that's fine for this session and let's wrap it up. Honestly, I think we can give you better renders, but it takes so much more time in comparison with Enscape to deliver that. And it, it's not that intuitive as Enscape, but at the other hand, it will give you more parameters and more freedom to create advanced materials like double-sided materials, like compound materials, and also uh, allowing you to assign normal map and displacement map at the same time. But it's not that intuitive as Enscape, and it is a little bit slower, at, especially on my PC, the Enscape will work much more uh, smoothly. But if you want to see more tutorials on V-Ray for Revit, make sure to comment down below. 
and if you want to learn Enscape and if you are a beginner make sure to watch this complete tutorial on here